I'm not putting snails on my skin, like, nah. -uh. Three, two, one, let's go. Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. Uh, my name is Rose. I wanted to start this channel because I've been obsessed with skincare for so many years. Um, it's really become kind of a big part of my life. Um, I have a job and, and I have lots of other hobbies as well, obviously. Like I'm really fun um, and I have loads of hobbies and fun things. Uh, no, I'm kidding. I don't have any hobbies, all fun. But I've been obsessed with skincare for so many years. Um, I started my skincare journey, if you want to call it that, but that's kind of a lame way of saying it. I started my skincare journey maybe uh, like two years ago because I had awful, awful, awful acne all the way um, up my like my, my jawbone and then it was starting to come across my, my cheeks and it was just such an unhappy time for me because I was always kind of, I guess, complacent with my skin. Like I didn't really do very much with it. And I had like fine skin, like my whole teenage years, like totally cool. Um, and then suddenly I was getting this awful acne and it was affecting my confidence in a way that I never thought was even possible. And so I started learning about skincare and, and different ways and methods of, of trying to uh, fix my acne and I just kind of let, I, as I say, I just fell in love with, with the industry. I love how it's always changing. Um, and helping myself helped me help other people. Say the word help again, Rose. The thing I really love is that when I'm able to help someone and, and their skin changes and they become more confident in themselves and um, like, you know, this weight has been lifted. Like that's such a wonderful thing in my life. And so if I can do that for more people, not just my friendship group, then that would make my life so much fuller. So I'm finally starting this channel um, in the hopes that maybe even if I just help like one or two people, then I'm a happy mushroom. Like that's a great thing in my book. So we are here um, in my apartment in Seoul. Um, I don't know if you can see lovely Seoul in the background there. Um, it's a beautiful day today. It's freezing. It's so cold. I can't even contemplate being colder when I'm outside, but it's really beautiful at the moment. I have lived here for a little while now. I love the city. Um, it's great and it's really good if you love skincare. It's a uh, kind of the mecca, I would say, of skincare. Um, and so a lot of my skincare tips and reviews and and the way that I deal with my skin issues um, are based in, I would say, kind of Asian philosophy and Asian products, and that's kind of my thing. So that's what we'll be talking about a lot on this channel. And speaking of which, uh, probably the main uh, thing that I get asked about is my routine and how to 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 do a 10 step korean skincare routine which people talk about all the time and it seems like the craziest thing and it's going to take you forever and it's really like over the top but it's very common here here in in south korea um and it it does work and if you really want to look after your skin and you want uh to achieve uh what you want to achieve with your skin i would suggest that a 10 step a proper good 10 step routine is the fastest way of achieving those goals. But it can be really intimidating because there's a lot of steps here and you're kind of like, what does this do? Why am I doing this? What is the whole thing about? So what I'm gonna do for my first video is really break down what a 10 step Korean skincare routine is. So hopefully that will give you a good kind of jumping block. Let's, let's say jumping block. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do with a 10 step Korean skincare routine is cleanse. But you're not gonna cleanse once, you're gonna cleanse twice. Um, this might seem a little bit over the top, but I promise you there is a very good reason why you're gonna to wanna to do it twice. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to cleanse with is an oil-based cleanser. Now, your oil-based cleanser is gonna wash off certain things that are bad on your face. So it's gonna wash off the SPF that you've been using, you're gonna wash off the sebum, all the pollutants that are on your skin. Oil counteracts oil, oil fights oil. So everything that's 
uh, negative and oily on your skin, that oil cleanser is gonna get rid of that for you. An oil-based cleanser usually comes in kind of a liquid form, but it can also come in a balm. Um, and what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna get some on your hands and you're gonna gently massage it around the face. Get a little bit of water on your hands and continue to rub that in. You're gonna, not gonna wanna rub hard. We're not gonna do anything rough with our skin. It's gonna turn usually into kind of a milky texture. The first one I, I love and I use daily um, is by Claire's. Uh, this is the Gentle Black Deep Cleansing Oil. Um, it's super, super, super gentle. I have incredibly sensitive skin, which is acne prone, and I have some rosacea as well. Um, I just basically have the most problematic skin that you could ever have. It's just, it just, it argues with me on a daily basis, which is unfair because literally all I do is love it. But anyway, I'm super, super, super sensitive, especially to cleansers. So this one is super gentle. Um, I love the way that it goes on, like it's it's cut, it's a, it's it, it's a liquid form. It's, it's super light. Um, I just really really enjoy using this product, and as I say, I use it twice a day, every day. Another product though that I do use. Also, I've kind of run out of it though, but um, it's quite difficult to get in South Korea. I have to order it in. So it's the vitamin C brightening cleansing oil from the Super Facialist. Um, as, I, as you can see, I've used it all up. It is quite difficult to get in this country. Um, but I love, 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 love this oil. Again, it's really great for my skin. It never makes me break out. Um, I don't get any redness with it. Um, it's got vitamin C in, which is super helpful for me fading my acne scars. So if that's an issue for you, I would say this one is a very, very good cleanser for you to use. It's got a little bit of a scent, which usually I don't love. But uh, with this, uh, I'm, but the reason I usually don't love them is because it that product is usually therefore quite uh, a little bit too intense for me. Um, but this one is great for my skin and I don't really mind the smell. But if smell is an issue, you might have a problem with that. But those two are cleansers that I would highly recommend if you're just starting out on your skincare journey. And then your second cleansing method um, is using a water-based cleanser. Now I have a love-hate relationship with water-based cleansers. I love them and they hate me. A lot of them are foaming cleansers and my skin just hates them. Just so irritated, so painful. It's took, it took me years to find one that I really love and can trust and use regularly. Um, so the one that I use at the moment is by Cosrx, the low pH good morning gel cleanser. Um, it's This one's a pretty popular one in Korea um, and all over the world really. And for good reason, it's super gentle. I can use it every morning and every night. I haven't had an issue with it. I've tried lots and lots and lots because I like trying different products and I like uh, looking at new things and, and new technologies and stuff like that. But I, but I keep coming back to this product because it, just does the job for me. As I say, if you're just starting out, this is a really, really good product to, 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 to try. So the reason you're gonna to wanna to use a water-based cleanser after your oil-based cleanser is to get rid of everything that the oil-based cleanser couldn't get rid of. So that's sweat and dirt and yeah, and if, uh, everything else that the oil-based cleanser couldn't get out. It's really the only way to get a pure canvas for when you then go and put loads of extra stuff on your skin. Um, this is the best way to achieve it. And, and you wanna make sure that when you're washing your face, you're really properly washing your face because I know that sounds really stupid and obvious, but um, a lot of people don't cleanse their faces as thoroughly as they should. And then they wonder why they have spots or irregular skin texture. Cleansing your skin properly is the is the best way, is the most foolproof way of combating some of these issues that a lot of people deal with. So you've cleansed. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is exfoliate, but we're not gonna do this every single day. We're gonna do this maybe three times a week once you build up some stamina, I'll say if that's the right word to use. When you first start doing this skincare routine, you're only gonna to wanna to do it about once a week. There's a common misconception with exfoliators that exfoliators have to be physical exfoliators, i.e. those horrible scrubs that people use sometimes that like physically lift dead skin cells off your face. I don't think that that's a good thing to do. All you're doing is making tiny little cuts. I mean, think about it like physically, you know, you're, you're dragging 
harsh solids across your very delicate skin. And yes, it will remove the bad stuff, but like it will also remove some of the good stuff. It doesn't decide which bits are good and which bits aren't. And you're gonna be making tiny little cuts, which at the moment, our skin is young and beautiful. Um, might not matter at all, but it will matter when we're 40, 50, 60, and we're dealing with the problems that come along with aging skin. If you can avoid that, do. This is why I love skincare. The technology is so advanced now. There's no need to be using physical exfoliators. Having said that, however, there is a product that I use very, very regularly to exfoliate my skin, which is kind of a half and half. It's mostly a chemical exfoliator, but there is a slight physical aspect to it. So I know I sound a little bit hypocritical and I'm sorry for that, but there is a reason why. This product is a really, really good product. It's the Neogen Gentle Gauze Peeling Pads. A lot of people use this product um, and there's a certain way to use these products that are not harmful. So in the pad, I'll just take it out for you so you can see. There's two sides. Um, one side is like a very soft pad and then this side is the kind of gauzy bit It's soaked with product all the way through so it has product on both sides and you are supposed to wipe very gently on your skin with the kind of gauzy side and then polish very gently with the softer cottony side. I kind of tend to really only use the cottony side um, I'm not a huge fan of the gauze. The gauze is very kind of soft gauze, so it's, it's not gonna do too much damage, but um, I don't think that there's any problem in using the very, very cotton side of it. The reason that I use this product is because it works the best for me. And so even though it is a physical and chemical exfoliator, I don't really use it in a physical exfoliating way. I think the ingredients in the product are really good and they help my skin dramatically. I need a good exfoliator to help me get rid of my acne scars and that one is one of the best ones to use. So I'll use that maybe twice a week um, and then once a week I will use my holy grail exfoliating product. I recommend this to everyone. In fact the reason I don't have a physical little jar of it to show you guys is because it is currently Living at my friend's house, she's gonna. She's trying it out for a couple of weeks. I have talked about it so much and she really, really needs a good exfoliator. So that's why I don't have it with me, but I do use this product religiously. And that is the AHA 30% BHA 2% peeling solution from The Ordinary. The Ordinary is a Western brand. Um, but they do have stores here in Korea. I love the ethos of the brand. I think that they do really, really good products. It's not always the most user-friendly shop because you really do have to know your stuff. You have to know your chemicals in order to get the best out of the uh, out of the experience. But if you know what you're talking about, if you know what you want, it's a great brand. And I use their peeling solution, as I say, about once a week. It comes in a liquid form and with a little pipette and you pop it on a little bit like a mask, smooth it over your skin, wait about 10 minutes and then you wash it off with room temperature water and it's just fantastic. It has really transformed my skin over the years um, and I'm so thankful. It's also at a really, really, really good price point. Super, super accessible and a fantastic exfoliator. So these two are the ones that I would suggest if you're just starting out. But again, you're not gonna be using it three or four times a week. You're gonna be using it once a week maximum until your skin builds up stamina. I don't think stamina is the right really word to use, but we're gonna use it anyway, because it's the one that I'm gonna go with. Okay, the so next product you're gonna to wanna to use is a toner. Toners are historically quite frightening things for a lot of people, because they used to be super acidic, especially in Western cultures. Like, when I was younger, my mum always drummed into me, cleanse, tone, moisturize, even from the age of like 11. But I remember using some toners that were like, whew, not good for my skin. Oh, it was horrible. They were stingy. They were full. It was like an astringent that you would sort of wipe onto your face. And um, that's not the case anymore, thank God. Um, especially in Asia, we have super, super, super gentle toners. Um, the reason that you're gonna wanna use a toner is you wanna wanna, you're gonna wanna wanna, you're gonna wanna get your face back to its original pH level. So when you cleanse, you're kind of, uh, 
not stripping your face because you should never be really stripping your face but you're you're getting rid of some of the oils and stuff like that on your face and and you need to um get your face back to to a healthy balance so that's how how a toner really helps and it also makes sure that all of the layers you do next can work the best that they possibly can. Some toners that I really, really love using. The first is by Neogen. I use their uh, Real Seeker Pad. It's jam-packed with Centella Asiatica, which is super, super, super helpful for my skin because it gets so easily irritated. I do have little bits of rosacea that come up. I have eczema. I have so many problems related to irritated skin um, or easily irritated skin that Centella Asiatica helps uh, soothe my skin and, 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 it, and it keeps it calm, which is really important for me. The thing I don't love about this product is that it's not particularly eco-friendly, so I'm always trying to find a product that is more eco-friendly, um, but if I'm having issues with my skin, I will always return to these pads. Another one that I'm trialing at the moment, actually, which again, I'm using because it's got Centella Asiatica in it, is the uh, Soon Jung pH 5.5 relief toner. This is very, very watery, um, as you can tell, um, which is pretty common for toners out here. Um, I pop a little bit in my hand and then I will gently pat it on, on my face. I'm still testing this product, as you can tell, um, and I will perhaps do a review on it later on. So once we've toned our skin, we're gonna be doing a step which is very, very, Korean, very Asian, and something that not a lot of my Western friends really get because it's not something that they're used to. It's not something that's often included in Western skincare routines, and that is essence. Um, essence you can look at as kind of a conduit, I would say, to, to, to the rest of the steps. So the reason that I think personally essences are so... Uh, common and so popular here is because there's very much an ethos of layering. They very much believe in putting really, really, really thin layers of ingredients on your skin to help activate um, the skin healing process. So essences are usually very thin liquids um, that you put on after your toner and they penetrate super, 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 super deep into your skin. So it's kind of like a toner, I guess, in that the reason that you're using it is to prepare your skin, but you're preparing your skin at a much deeper level and, and you're adding moisture to your skin um, in order to make sure that all the products that you're gonna put on later really, really work the best that they can. So there's two that I use religiously all the time and I always come back to. So if you're looking for kind of like a, a basic 101 essence, these two are the two that I would recommend. The first one um, is another uh, Cosrx product. Um, this is the Advanced Snail Mucin Power Essence. This is super, super, super popular here in Korea. A lot of people use it. It is snail mucin, which might make people freak out a little bit. It, it did a little bit when I first got here. I was like, I'm not putting snails on my skin, like, nah. -uh. But um, it's a really great product for if you have any kind of hyperpigmentation or scarring like I do, that's a really big issue for me. So the skin mucin um, helps penetrate the, 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 the different layers of your skin, um, helps with skin regeneration. The, quicker your cell turnover, the quicker you're gonna get rid of those scars. I think the reason that people love this product so much is it has such a high concentration of snail mucin. Super, super high concentration, so you're really getting your money's worth with this product. A lot of people from home ask me whether it feels like snail mucin, and I guess it does a little bit. Well, no, it doesn't. So it is a little, I don't know if you can see, but it is a little bit, sticky yeah it's a little bit sticky but not in a weird way not in a creepy way and not in a way that thinks you're literally sliming a snail over your skin because that's disgusting you'll be fine it's all good people use it everywhere here you're you're gonna be great the next essence that i use all the time is the time revolution first treatment essence they've just come out with a new version of this product this is their pro ferment version um, their last one was intense moisture i think i have been using this product for a, a, a number of years now um it's very 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 watery and very 
light. A lot of people say that it's a dupe for the SK2 Essence and I would agree with that having used both. I think that this is a really good product at a really, really good price point. It does exactly what you need it to do. It's a very, very good essence. It's good for moisturization. As I say, it's a very, very light liquid. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna pop some into your hand and you're gonna gently pat all over your face to get that super light layer on top of your toner. It's a very, very good essence for the price that it's sold at. Um, it's a good moisturizer. It does what it says on the tin, basically. It's, it's a really classy product. I like this a lot. So we've used snails on our skin. We've toned our skin. We've exfoliated our skin and we've cleansed our skin. The next thing we're gonna use is we're gonna start uh, healing our skin. We're gonna start using products specifically for our skin concern. And the way that we do that is using serums and ampules. So for me at the moment, I'm using one serum and one ampule. The serum that I'm using is one that I've been using for a little while now. Um, it is the Claire's Pure Vitamin C and Centella Asiatica Extract Serum. As you can, as you know by now, I love a good Centella Asiatica product. But this one also has vitamin C in it, which is super, super, super good um, for, as I said, I mentioned earlier in the video, really, really, really good for helping me with my acne scarring. Um, it helps brighten my skin. Accelerated cell turnover is what we really want to achieve here. Um, and this product helps me do that a lot. It's a pretty popular serum to use and it's been working for me for a little while now. How I would use this serum is I would um, get a couple of drops onto my hand and I would pat it very, very, very gently all over my skin, all over my face, all over my neck. Really, really super important not to forget the neck in any of these steps. But one product that I am testing out in addition to that is from Misha, the Time Revolution um, Night Repair Ampule. I have been using this for maybe a week now. I need a good night recovery ampule because it is getting incredibly, incredibly cold here in South Korea and I can kind of feel my skin starting to suffer and if I can find a, a lovely reparatory, reparatory, those aren't words, those aren't words at all. If I can find a product that's gonna repair my skin, then I'm gonna use it. And, and this one came really highly recommended. So I'm just testing that out and I will let you know how that test goes. Another good one um, that I used to use quite a lot when I first started out on my skincare journey is the Buffet Serum from The Ordinary. Again, the brand that I mentioned earlier. It's super, I wouldn't say basic, not basic in a bad way, but it's basic in that if you're just starting out, it's a really fantastic baseline. Um, it's got lots of good ingredients in it. It's really super popular. A lot of people use it because if you've got normal skin and you just wanna push that skin to, to, kind of to the next level, that serum is a really, really, really good way to start. The Buffet Serum is a, is a non, problematic serum that you can use kind of alongside with that. So you know it's not really gonna be a problem for you. So that's what I would recommend if you're just starting out. So the most important thing to do when you're searching for your perfect serum is really identify what the issues are that you're trying to combat. For example, if you have really awful uh, acne, uh, that, that get a serum that helps you with that. If you have incredibly dry skin, get a serum that adds moisture. If, you're, if you've got awful scarring, get a serum that um, improves cell turnover, it increases cell turnover. A serum really does need to be something that you use specifically to help you with problems. That's what it's there for. That's the whole point. So identify the issues and help yourself, help your serum help you. So once you have applied your serum, what you're gonna wanna do next is get out those sheet masks. Now this is super, super, super Korean. It's super Asian. It's uh, uh, it's starting to become more popular in, in the West, um, but they're pr still pretty expensive in England and, and the US, whereas here, sheet masks are so inexpensive and super, super, super high quality. I mean, there are literally stores that just sell sheet masks. It's incredible. People, women in, in South Korea will use sheet masks daily. It's it's become part of my daily routine. I know it seems a little bit extra. I think if you get into a routine of doing your skin properly every morning and taking the time, then what you're also doing is you're putting time aside for yourself. 
which is mentally a really healthy thing to be doing. And sheet masks are kind of the epitome of this, right? What does a sheet mask do? A sheet mask is a mask, a, sh a sheet, that you put on your face that is drenched in um, ingredients that improve your skin texture, moisture, um, various other skin complaints. Um, you leave it on your skin um, and it absorbs all, 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 of the, all of the good stuff that it's been soaked in and then you pat it dry afterwards. The one that I really like at the moment is this, it's another Centella Asiatica product, guys. It's a Sika Pear Calming Mask from Dr. Jart. I love the Dr. Jart sheet masks, are really, really good. I use the brightening one a lot. Um, I that there's really loads of good moisturizing ones, especially in this weather. One little tip I would have uh, for, skit, for sheet masks, especially if you're just starting to use them, is when you take out the sheet mask and you put it on your face, everything's great, you're having a good time, everything's fine, but remember that there's still gonna be product at the bottom of the package. So always make sure to take get, get every single ounce of product you can get out of these little packages and um, I tend to pop them on my hands, um, down my neck, because all of these areas uh, need a little bit of extra love sometimes, and the, the extra product is really, really high quality product, and you don't wanna be wasting it. So yeah, so you pop a sheet on, leave it for 10 to 20 minutes, depending on the actual sheet mask, and then you take it off, and then you pat in the remaining um, serum. I've seen people in the past, like, wash off, the excess and like that's not like that's not good like don't be doing that because it's really fantastic quality ingredients that you're just getting rid of i don't get it i don't understand why but whatever that is for another that's for another day so after you've taken off your sheet mask and you've padded in all of the excess serum you're going to want to pop um some eye cream um under your eyes it's one of the most delicate parts of your face the the the, the under eye and 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 well the, the eye area in general the skin is is much thinner than everywhere else and so it's the first to to show signs of aging so the more that you can plump it up the more that you can moisturize it and really take care of it the the longer it's gonna uh, look after you i have a lot of issues with certain eye creams because again because i have just the worst skin in the entire world i have extremely extremely extensive eyes so any product that gets in my eyes or near my eyes i have huge issues and it burns and it stings and it's just a huge big problem for me oh it's just horrible so i use the uh mizon snail repair cream you don't need to be putting this cream all the way up here and like all the way on your eyelids you don't need to be doing that um especially at night like pop it right here on on your on on the bone um and again on your brow bone and the product will travel down and also travel up this has helped me hugely i actually got this tip from mix makeup so shout out thank you so much you honestly you saved me in so many respects but it means that i don't have so many issues with super irritated eyes you should use your ring fingers when you apply uh, a, an eye cream so you're just going to tap super super gently do not rub you don't want to be doing anything this area i cannot explain to you how important it is that you maintain the integrity of the skin and you don't push it around and bully it. Like you've got to be super, super, super gentle. So take your ring fingers and gently, gently tap the uh, the product here and also up here and it will look after you, I promise you. Uh, so that's a really, really good tip for if you're just starting out. So after we've popped our eye cream on, we're back in familiar territory for a lot of you. We are using a moisturizer on our skin. Um, a lot of people already use this. People know what it does. It just, adds moisture to your skin, funnily enough, uh, which is really important to maintain your he healthy skin cells, essentially. There's so many reasons that a good moisturizer is necessary, important, fundamental to your to, to a healthy skincare routine. What you're doing with your moisturizer is you're locking everything in, right? So you've put all of these really, really, really thin layers on um, specifically for to do certain jobs on your skin. And your moisturizer is usually a kind of like a thicker cream um, that is gonna seal in all of that good stuff. The moisturizer that I use on a daily basis is the Mise-en-Multifunction All-in-One Snail Repair Cream. 
I love this cream. Um, I've been using it for a really, really, really long time. It's got 92% snail extract in it, which is again, a very high percentage. It's been a journey to find a moisturizer that works for me. This particular product is super, super, super lightweight. Um, dries very nicely. Um, I think that it's just a really lovely product for me. You're going to want to probably use a couple of different moisturizers. In a winter, you're obviously going to want to use a slightly heavier moisturizer and then in the summer, you can use a lighter one, but you're definitely going to want to use one all year round. Uh, it's really easy for some people to say, oh, listen, I don't use a moisturizer. I've got really oily skin or whatever. You need a moisturizer. And often uh, when you have very oily skin, it's because you're obviously over producing oil. And so when you use a moisturizer, your skin thinks, hmm, I, I don't need to produce this much oil because I'm already getting the uh, the levels that I need from, from elsewhere. Um, and so actually a lot of my friends who have extremely oily skin have seen a reduction in the amount in their oil production because they've started using a moisturizer that works for their skin type. A couple of great moisturizers that I've used in the past. Belief have their True Cream Moisturizing Balm. Really fantastic product. Um, it's a little bit heavier than, than I would usually use, but it was extremely non-irritant for me, which is one of the most important things. When I had really awful acne a couple of years ago, um, I used the Dr. Belmure Clarifying Moisturizer every day. This moisturizer uh, really helped the rest of my skin be as healthy as it possibly could. So I'm very thankful for that particular moisturizer. And if you have acne prone skin, that's a, that's a good one. To use. Atto Palm also do a really fantastic moisturizer. It's called the Intensive Moisturizing Cream, I believe. Um, and that one I use a lot. It's really, really, really good for sensitive skin and it kind of helps me calm my skin down. Um, so those are a couple of uh, moisturizers that I think are really excellent choices if you're just starting out. And I will link everything below so that you will, you, you'll you be able to kind of see, see what I'm talking about. So now we're gonna break up our skincare routine and we're gonna talk about just the morning. So I don't do this at nighttime, I just do this in the morning. And this is super important. This is one of the most important things that you, you can do. If you do nothing else, then please, please, please do this. I mean, do everything else too, because I've literally sat here for quite a while now and made a video about it all. But if you don't wanna do everything, please do this. And that is use SPF. SPF is super important. Um, if you want good skin for not just now, but for the rest of your life, protecting it is the, is the one important thing that you can do. And also SPF like 10, SPF nine that you've got in your like tinted moisturizer or your makeup or whatever, it's not cutting it. Like, have that as well, but you have to have at least factor 50, at least a factor 50 that you're putting on in addition to all of the other stuff that you're putting on your face. There's really no point, especially if you're doing things like exfoliating or using vitamin C powders or using vitamin C serums or whatever you might be doing, if, if, if you're not protecting your skin, you can actually be doing your skin quite a lot of harm. The Koreans are, are so serious about not getting in going in the sun that people will go out in umbrellas in the middle of summer it's a it's a it's a real thing and they will not step outside without spf i know a lot of people that don't use spf and you're crazy like you're crazy like protect your skin because if you don't protect it now then you're going to be in a situation in like 20 25 30 years where you can't repair a lot of the damage that you're doing i use another claire's product every day for my spf um it's their soft airy uv essence everyday sun protector it's spf 50. i love this product it's super 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 light um i understand why they call it an essence it does feel quite essency. It doesn't have a strong sun cream smell that a lot of people complain about. Um, it doesn't have a white um, tint. I know that some people really, really, really hate sunscreens because it gives them a white finish, but this one, fantastic sun cream. There's lots and lots of other options, especially in Korea because it's such a uh, important product for everybody's daily routines, but this is one that I think that every everybody will love. Every single morning, uses SPF. Gotta do it. Okay, so I don't apply SPF in the nighttime, but I do have a little extra step in the nighttime that I do, and that is I apply a sleeping mask. So I actually have two sleeping masks that I use um, every single day. I love these masks. I've been using them for like a year now, and I just 
um, super loyal because they're great. The first one is the Laneige water sleeping mask. Um, I think that this is just a fantastic little product. I adore it. Um, I love the texture. It's really light. A lot of sleeping masks are quite thick and heavy, which breaks me out. And it's, uh, and I don't feel comfortable sleeping with really, really, really heavy uh, cream on my skin. Um, and this one is almost, I would say, kind of like gel-like. It doesn't have a fragrance, which I love. A, a lot of the products that I put on at night um, are specifically to repair and heal. And this product makes sure that those products can do their job. And I just really, really, really adore it. It leaves me with super soft, super hydrated, obviously, skin, um, which is all I really want from it. Claire's do a really, really good one. It's actually uh, the sister, I think, of the serum that I use, the Freshly Juiced, um, but this one is a Freshly, is the Freshly Juiced Vitamin E uh, sleeping mask. Uh, that one I used for a couple months and I really, really, really liked it. I felt like that one really helped me get very soft skin. Um, it was really highly moisturizing, which I liked a lot. So a uh, one that's really popular at the moment is by Solwasu. Their vitalizing overnight sleeping mask is super popular and has been for a little while now. Um, and I also really enjoyed using that one for the time that I used it. So any of those really are good start points if you, if you wanna start using a sleeping mask to make sure that overnight your skin is repairing itself as best that it can. I also use lip sleeping masks. Um, I use two depending on how I feel that evening. So the first one um, is by Laneige as well. Um, it's the uh, lip sleeping mask in Berry. I really like the flavor, it tastes delicious. Um, I think that it does wonders for my skin, it kind of, uh, makes my skin like my, makes my lips sorry um plump and moisturized and uh i have issues with uh kind of dry chapped skin uh, lips when it's very very cold and obviously like that's like super not cute like you don't want that um so this really really helps me um my favorite lip balm ever um, is this one by Clavu, their Nourishing Care Lip Sleeping Pack. I use this not just in the nighttime, but in the daytime too. It tastes kind of vanilla-y, I guess you could say, um, but it's just a fantastic moisturizing product. Um, I feel that my skin on my lips stays uh, plump and moisturized for hours and hours and hours and hours. Um, it also gives quite a nice like a lip glossy look uh, during the day, which I kind of like, because I really rarely wear lip um, products, like uh, like lip sticks and stuff like that, or, or lip tints. Um, so this is my go-to, not just in the nighttime, but for the daytime too. So I go to bed looking a little bit crazy. I've got like this sleeping mask on and the lip mask on, but um, you have to do certain things in order to look beautiful and not that i look beautiful but you know what i mean i look as i look this is the best that it can get at this stage and i'm good in, i'm good with that like that's fine so that is my very quick uh, actually it wasn't that quick but uh, that that was my super basic rundown of what you should be looking for when you're starting your 10 step Korean skincare routine. Thank you so much for watching, if you did. Um, if you liked it, please like the video, uh, subscribe to my channel, and also comment. I'd love to hear from you guys about what you liked about the video and what you didn't like about the video. Um, if you wanna see anything else from this channel, uh, just pop in a little comment, um, and that would be really, really helpful to me. So uh, thank you so much, and I will see you in the next video. Mwah. Bye.